Amen. It's good to be here with you today. And I'm looking forward to what the Lord's got for us. And want to wish you a Merry Christmas. You too. I'll show you. Everybody in church, too. Oh, amen. amen. Now, now uh, after we get past Carol of the Bells, this next song was written by two people. The music was written by George Frederick Handel, a classical composer, the one that wrote The Messiah. And I'll stick that in this too while we're at it. Uh, but uh, the, the words part was written by Isaac Watts. Uh, Isaac Watts is called the father of English hymnody. Uh, in other words, uh, he was the one that kind of uh, was the beginning uh, of all of our English hymns that we have. Uh, you'll notice in any given hymn book, in any given church, a lot of hymns written by Isaac Watts. He wrote the words to this. And uh, my wife asked me, she said, you're going to let him sing along with you? I said, well, no. And, and then I laughed and I said, I'm teasing with you. Everybody, you can sing along if you know the words and want to. Or even if you don't know the words, feel free to sing along all the time. Uh, but I'll start with this one. We know this one, so I want you to feel free to, to sing along with it as well. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in one or so big sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in one or so big sleigh. In a one horse open sleigh, o'er the fields we go, laughing all the way. Bells on bob till ring, making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sing a sleigh song tonight! Jingle bells, jingle bells. 
shingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Day or two ago, I thought I'd take a ride. Soon Miss Fanny Bright was seated by my side. The horse was green and lame. Miss Fortune seemed to slump. We got into a drifting bank and we, we got him sunk. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse open sleigh. Turn that corner there, John. <laughs> Hi, how are you all doing? <laughs> Man, I'll tell you what. Well, now, this, this one uh, was, uh, was written, uh, the, the music part was written way back in the, probably the 13th century. Nobody's really sure. Uh, and it was sent to a tune called Green Sleeves. But the words were written by an insurance uh, manager by the name of William Dix. William Dix is a very interesting fellow. He was a Christian. Uh, and about age 29, around Christmas time, he got uh, very, very sick. And it was during that period that he wrote most of the hymns that he wrote. He wrote, uh, as with uh, Gladness Men of Old, he wrote that one too. And during that period, he wrote this one as well. Uh, I love it. Uh, it's an old English carol. It goes like this. Child is this who laid to rest on Mary's lap, is sleeping, who made angels green with anthem sweet, while shepherds watch our king. So 
I'm just sort of sitting here whistling right now and oh. <laughs> enjoying myself. No, I've got to learn now. We were talking about that the other day. I did a concert out of church and I wanted to do that for that. I need to learn that. Dad used to have an old uh, Burl Ives record. And as a matter of fact, before he passed, he made a tape of that for me. Uh, I think it was called Happy Holidays, as a matter of fact. Uh, and, uh, and uh, there were a lot of songs on there. One I fell in love with because it brought back a lot of memories as a kid. Uh, and I have a lot of good Christmas memories I could tell you about. I was sharing with them the other night about uh, uh, one time that uh, my uncle, before Christmas, had given me a rooster and a hen. Uh, I mean, Uncle Coy thought that no little boy ought not to have a rooster and a hen, even though we only had a half acre. I love that hen. I get fresh eggs every morning. I didn't like that rooster so good, and he hated me. He'd flog me all the time. Uh, well, one time Santa Claus couldn't make it uh, for a gathering we had at our house, and uh, uh, so my dad called the farmer up the road and asked him, would you come down and deliver presents, play Santa Claus? And he said, I'd be glad to. So he went down. And I'm sure that he told him, look, while you're down here, I know you've uh, got chickens and, and, and roosters. said, take that chicken and the rooster before the rooster kills the boy. So Santa Claus stole my rooster that night. And that was the best Christmas present I believe I ever got. <laughs> Years later, I was up at his farm, by the way, me and my uh, cousin. And we were playing around. He said, go and get so-and-so for me. He's working on a tractor in the barn. And I had to go through the, the chicken yard to go get it. I said, okay, but first of all, you tell me which one of those roosters are offsprings of that rooster you <laughs> took from me. Then. But uh, this is about a little boy that's out in Louisiana. And he's having weather like we're having right now. But the problem is he wants snow for Christmas. So he goes straight to the top. Uh, it's called Snow for Johnny by Burl Ives. <laughs> Let's go. 
Randy Beautiful. Another good uh, good memory I have a, a Christmas is uh, getting to come to the big city of Covington. You know, that was a big thing when we'd only you'd do it you know, once a year to shop at least. Uh, we come to see my grandma and grandpa who lived uh, in Covington. But uh, uh, back in those days, they had loudspeakers. If you remember, out on the sidewalks, all the shops, Coppins and Woolworths, uh, Pennies, uh, had all, all those things. And they had the loudspeakers, and they'd blow out music, even out on the streets. Uh, uh, Christian music and uh, mm -hmm. songs like Snow for Johnny and things like that. But this one would always be playing, and whenever I hear it, I think of, of Christmas, whatever time of year it might happen to be. City sidewalks, busy sidewalks, dressed in holiday style. In the air, there's a feeling of Christmas. Children laughing, people passing. some this year that uh, uh, that I hadn't heard in a long time. This, this next one, we sang in choir when I was in middle school. And I'm here to tell you, middle school is in a rearview mirror, way, way back there for me. Uh, but uh, uh, So this song is very old. Matter of fact, it's a, tr a true story, or at least in part, about a great man uh, that lived in the 900s. He was the prince and later the king of Bohemia, a Christian man. His name was Winslowus. And he was known as Winslowus the Holy. Uh, so this, uh, this may or may not be a true story, but he did indeed love to give presents to people on St. Stephen's Day, which was December the 26th, the day after Christmas. Uh, this story is all about good King Winslowus. Beautiful, Randy. Beautiful. Thank you. Look out on the feast of 
You're fine then. Okay. Thank then you very much. And I love your dog over there. I take I'm gonna take a picture of him, I mean, but it's okay. <laughs> it's nice to be here with you. I'm I'm uh I tag along with Randy sometimes because you know what? I learn a lot from Randy. And uh he's just a wonderful person that I have the good fortune of knowing for a very long time, and he helped help lead my brother to the Lord back many years ago. And uh, uh, that's really what Christmas is all about. So I called Randy and I said, you mind if I go out there with you today and, and uh, whistle a little bit and maybe sing a little bit? And, and I, um, my dad was a whistler. And you might have seen him back many years ago walking all the streets around here because he did a lot of walking. And uh, wound up dying in an automobile accident at the age of 86 in the arms of a Baptist minister. And uh, he couldn't have gone a better way, Randy. And he uh, was a good Christian, and my brother was a good Christian at Randy's church. 
I try to sneak out to Randy's church as many, often as I can. My wife June and I do. And uh, he said he was coming out here today, and I said, you mind if I tag along with you? He said, no, come on along, along. Now, we've been going to the homeless shelter at Fairhaven for about 30 years, every fourth Friday, down to Fairhaven Homeless Shelter, singing to the men. I know that has to help. It, it's a praise the Lord type thing, and I, we both enjoy it, don't we, Randy? Absolutely. And my brother used to go, and my sister used to go, and they've both gone on to heaven now. We used to have about nine or ten that went, didn't we, Randy? Yeah, yeah we, we, you never knew how many we had. That's right. <laughs> it was great. We love having Randy come. We love having you come. Well, I'm tickled to be here at 80. I'm tickled to be anywhere. I'm moving that good when I'm 80. You want me to sing a little song, Randy? Yes, sir. Do you have one in mind? Well, am I allowed to sing my old Kentucky home? Yes. It's well, this is a song that I learned from a person that you all might have remembered in your history. His name was Happy Chandler. And uh, when I was a young man in 1967, Happy Chandler taught me how to sing this song. I was president of the student government at the University of Kentucky Community College here in Northern Kentucky. And he came up to speak and I said, sir, will you teach me how to sing this song? And he said, young man, poked me on the chest with his finger, almost knocked me down. <laughs> and he said, I'll teach you how to sing it, but you got to sing it from your heart. So I'll sing my old Kentucky home from my heart today because I've learned a hard lesson in life. It's the Holy Spirit's job to convict. It's God's job to judge. And it's my job to love. And ever since I had a minister and his wife, Polly, Brother Kerger, from out at Little Kenton Baptist Church, and four deacons, John Grizel and Walter Roden and Vernon Likens and Carl Covey, took my little sister and I, who was a retired teacher, and myself, down to Louisville, Kentucky, to hear a Billy Graham crusade. And it was at that crusade in 1956 that I gave my life to the Lord. And uh, I learned two songs from George Beverly Shea. One was, I'd Rather Have Jesus. And the other one was, How Great Thou Art. And I learned this one here from Happy Chandler. And they always say, listen to your elders. Well, Billy Graham preached on that sermon today, that, what, that message I just gave you. And that's it's the Holy Spirit's job to convict. It's God's job to judge. It's my job to love. And today, I want you to know something. I love you, and I know for a fact that Randy loves you. And we love being here with you. And the song goes like this. The sun shines bright on my old Kentucky home. Tis summer, the children at play. The corn tops ripe and the meadows are in bloom and the birds make music all the day weep no more my lady oh weep no more today we will sing one song for my old Kentucky home for my old Kentucky home far 
away. Now before I sing the last verse, let me tell you a little story about my mother, Garnet Bingham Stevenson. She wrote a verse that I use quite often as a sophomore at the old Crittenden High School. And the verse is about the Lord and the Bible and about giving a lift to your fellow man. And she wrote that song and she taught me the lesson of that song by taking me outside and showing me how she was going to build a little arrow. And she built this arrow out of stones when we lived on Wolf Road. Up the road about two miles from the railroad tracks. And she pointed this arrow with stones right to the house. And I never could figure out until one day a guy come knocking on the door. And mom says, get the door, Johnny. It's supper time. And the arrow out there was a signal to all of the hobos, we called them back in those days, that rode the trains. And they knew that if they saw an arrow pointing to our house, toward a house, that was a sign they could come in and get a free meal. And do you know I sat there and watched people come into that house for many years? My mom feeding them a meal. And I learned a lesson that day that what the Bible says about doing to your neighbor what you would do to yourself, and that is give a little lift up to somebody who needs a lift up. And that's what Jesus taught us to love the greatest gift he gave us, the gift of love. Well, the rest of this song goes like this. Oh, the children roll on the little cabin floor all merry, all happy and bright. By and by hard times Comes a knocking at the door Then my old Kentucky home Says good night Now join in with me Weep no more my lady sing one song for my old Kentucky home for my old Kentucky home far away God bless America and God bless Kentucky we just had a bless. We just had a blessing. You'll never believe it. Paula's stepdaughter just called me. Paula's woke up. Yay. Oh, and she wonderful! And dialed my number on her phone. Oh, I know yeah, that's praying. God's blessing. We yeah. all been a praying, and I just had to tell you all. Wonderful. You know. Yeah. Oh, tell Mandy to give us a blessing. Mandy, do a blessing. I'll, I'll be glad to. Right. Lord, you just keep doing it today. Thank yes. you so much. Lord, today uh, we thank you on thank behalf you, of Paul God. and her dear family. And thank you for getting this good news to us. We yes. rejoice in it. Lord, even earlier today, we had a fellow from our church going through emergency open heart surgery. And Lord, just left him to stop the house briefly and come on over uh, to this. And oh, Lord, uh, got the news as, as his doctor came out. He went and did fine. He's recuperating fine. Lord, we pray for a speedy recovery for Paula. And, uh, and ask for strength for her family as they continue on 
uh, but just uh, help everything to work out just fine. Thank you for this a uh, thousand times over. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for hearing Amen. and answering our prayers. Amen. Oh, thank you, Amen. Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise I just the Lord. want to thank you. Oh, it's wonderful news. Beautiful. It's wonderful. She's so loved around here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Randy, go ahead and sing another one there if you want to. Yeah. Huh? Yes. You want to do I'd rather have Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, 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 I make, make sure I got the words to it. You feel right at home on this one. This is normally. Which one, Hal I'd rather have you. What's the first? How does it start off? I'd rather have Jesus. This is one of the songs that George Beverly Shade taught me. But am I going to have to confess something to you? <laughs> I just left the doctor's office a few minutes ago. Actually, I drove straight here from the doctor's office and I've got something happening to me where I'm getting a shock in my right heel <laughs> and um, about every 10 seconds and it's like, like electronic shock and they're putting me on a bunch of medicine of course I'm already on a bunch of medicine I'm on so much medicine I don't know what medicine if I wasn't for my wife I wouldn't know what I was taking and it's a great it's a wonderful thing to have a wife you can trust because I, I have morning pills and evening pills and they're stacked in little boxes. And uh, But anyway, I'm still alive. So I'll try to sing this song, but I don't know if I'll remember the words because the virus got me three Christmases ago and I was in Fort Thomas Hospital for quite some stay and lost a lot of uh, memory. So I'm not quite what I used to be that way, but I'll try to do this a little bit here because I want to share the love with you that George Beverly Shea shared with me at the Billy Graham Crusade. And it goes like this. counties in Kentucky and filming the history of all of them and looking them in the eye and remembering what what
was said about our Vice President, Alvin Barkley, when he passed away. And he said he'd rather sit in the church on the back row than to be sitting with all the kings and the presidents of the world. And he said that because he believed in the Lord. And that's really what's on his tombstone. I'd rather have Jesus than houses or lands. I'd rather be led by his nail-pierced hand. I'd rather have Jesus than anything this world up awards today than to be the king of a vast domain or be held in sin's dread sway I'd rather have Jesus than anything Thing this world affords today. God bless you and thank you for having me here today with Randy. And my wife's name is June Guyman Stevenson, too, and she is the smartest move I ever made, and I didn't make it. Can I tell this little story, Randy? Yeah, yeah. Well, you'll see her, if you ever get out on YouTube or Facebook, I'm out there a great deal. Two Facebook pages and on YouTube with all of my Santa Claus shows. You can see Santa Claus Entertainment Series and Santa Claus, uh, uh, Santa Claus Entertainment Series and Santa Claus <coughs> Education Series. They're shown on TV also, on cable television. But they're out there, and you'll see my wife, and I never will forget. I was at a place called Charlie McKeever's having supper. A young lady walked up to me by the name of Pat Walker. At that time, her name was Pat Wellenzak. I had sponsored a girls' softball team when I was with Congressman John Breckenridge. They came down to see me from Simon Kenton High School and said, we need a sponsor. And I said, well, who gets to name the team? You sponsor us, you can name the team. So I named them Stevenson's Farmerettes. <laughs> <laughs> and they were championship teams from Simon Kenton. And she came to me later in life. She said, I hope you don't mind, but I invited someone to your party tomorrow. I said, Pat. Invite anybody you want to. She said, well, come on down here. I'd like to introduce you to her. So I thought, oh, geez, right in the middle of my supper. <laughs> so I got up right about halfway down Charlie McKeever's, and I laid my eyes on the lady that she was talking about, and I said, my goodness, great, is sex alive. Invite her to my picnic any day. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, now, John, get your best moves ready. Suave and debonair. So I walked over to her and I talked with her and told her some nice things, you know. And, and I said, now, may I have your telephone number? And she looked me right in the eye and she said, I think not. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the truth. And I picked up a Charlie McKeefer's coaster and I wrote it, uh, my name and number on there and a little map on how to get to the house. And I said, Come on to the picnic tomorrow, no strings attached. You'll have a good time. Well, I went back and finished my meal, and I ate the meal, and I got up and left, and I, as I was walking out the door, Randy, I glanced over at her, and she glanced back at me, and our eyes locked on each other, and she said later, 
the Lord told her as I walked out the door, there goes your husband out the door. Now she said, oh no. <laughs> but she came to the picnic the next day and we wound up going for a walk. I had a nice story about that too. I walked right into the volleyball net when I saw her come around the corner of the house, tripped over a stool and got up and said, what do you like to do? She said, I like to walk. And I said, well, let's go for a walk. And had about 70 people there and I said, we'll be back shortly. We're gonna go for a walk through Fort Mitchell here. We took a two and a half hour walk. We got back, there was only one person left there. And would you believe four years later, four years later, we got married in that house March the 31st, 1989, and took off on our honeymoon through eight countries in Europe, and you can watch that whole honeymoon on YouTube now, all eight countries. That's God's working, if you're patient, and I was patient for four years, and wound up marrying a wonderful Christian lady who teaches and has taught for many years Bible study classes to ladies. Randy, now you're going to sing one? <laughs> so I thought I'd tell you that little story about how God does work in mysterious ways. So when you miss Miss Jean, you, June, you can ask her if she's telling the truth or not. <laughs> and she's a guyman, by the way, from over in Campbell County. You're from Dayton over there? Well, you know a lot of the Gaimans over there. Well, she was one of the nine children in the Gaiman family. Yeah, like the Bowies and the, yeah. Yeah. And the, yeah. What you gonna do, Randy? Uh, I'm gonna some beer again. I was standing here thinking 41 years ago today, I know what I was doing. We were in the hospital having our first baby. Oh, mercy. <laughs> and, uh, it's Emily's birthday today. I love this one. This one is uh, was the favorite Christmas carol in, in, uh, in Old England, I'm told. So uh, you probably know it. Feel free to sing along if you want.
beautiful, beautiful, Randy. Beautiful. Looking out here, uh, we're we don't want to overstay our, our welcome, but it's uh, it's good to be with you all, and love love to be with you. Uh, I want to share with you uh, one that uh, that I wrote for a candlelight service at our church a few years ago. Uh, it's called "There's a Star." It goes like this. Beautiful. 
absolutely beautiful. Well, this is a little different, a uh, little different setting of this, but uh, but you know the song. I want to leave you with this uh, this, this today, and well, again, we wish you a very merry Christmas, and we look forward to getting to see you again real soon. But it'll be in 2024. It'll take me all year to learn how to write that that number. Yeah, all year. <laughs> but, uh, so if you, if you want to sing along, feel free to just find a place to grab on, and, and let's go home. <laughs> close today off I happen to know that one of your daughters is having a birthday today yes is that right yes, yes. and is it Emily uh-huh Emily Emily where well, we ought to sing a little happy birthday to Emily so she can see this on YouTube and Facebook hey. are you ready Randy for I it think, I think so. happy, happy birthday, birthday to you happy birthday to you Happy birthday, dear Emily. Happy birthday to you. And a wonderful young lady she is. She even helped me move one time. <laughs> and did a great job. <laughs> Fantastic. You want to close with a prayer, Randy? Or? Be glad. Be glad. Let's bow together. Lord, once again, thank you so much for uh, uh, the news about Paula. We give you the praise and the glory for that. Thank you for our time together. And Lord, I wish a very Merry Christmas to everyone that's here today. And help them to have a wonderful New Year as well. Look forward to getting to be back with them again as soon as possible. And in the meantime, keep us safe and happy and, and healthy as we continue on for your glory. We give you the praise and the honor in your name. Amen.
Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you for joining us on YouTube today and Facebook. Travels with John Stevenson and June Guyman Stevenson with guest Randy Wallace today and minister in Oak Ridge Baptist Church where you're greeted with a smile and arms of love. 859-750-0000. Join us on Facebook and YouTube. I was back in just, the seventies. Just back in the seventies, this wonderful lady here from Dayton, Kentucky. Beverly Hills Fire. Yep. And uh, uh, your name? Kim Gallagher. Kim Gallagher. Dayton, Kentucky Fire Department. And uh, went to Dayton High School. Knows uh, Jack Moreland and. And she knows a lot of the Guymans over there in Campbell County. I always say, my wife, another Guyman diamond. Every time you turn a rock over in Campbell County, you find another Guyman diamond. We lived on 4th Street. Oh, you live on 4th Street. 4th Street, Street Dayton, yep. Gallagher's on 4th, yep. Well, praise the Lord for that territory over there. God bless you. Take care. And my mom was a substitute teacher, too. Is that right? Fantastic. Well, they got a good school there in Dayton. Charlie Thorpe, he was a my insurance man for years. You he think he did a history on Dayton? Yeah. Yeah, I know. He was my insurance man for years and Is years. Is that right? Yeah. How wonderful. Yeah, so yeah. Well, it's nice to be out here with you today. And yeah, nice to be. Yeah, we were born in Red River Rats. Yeah. So I'm born in Red River Rat. <laughs> This is a nice place here, isn't it? Oh, it is. Yeah, I like yeah. it. Yeah. Because I came out of my small apartment, and I started on the phone. I'm like, hey, by myself. I want to go to some place with this. And it's nice. Everybody, you have your own apartment, yeah. and they have stuff, so you're really not. Yeah. You can go to your own place, but yeah. I want to be around people, but have my own place. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, this is nice. It's a really, yeah, it's really nice. nice. Run, and the people that run us are really nice, too. They're always doing something. There's always something going on. Yeah. Well, um, good. So. Well, I was in a big house by myself, and I couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. It's a lot to keep up, isn't it? It's a three-bedroom house. Yeah. There's no way I could do it anymore. No. no. Well, I'm so. glad I was able to come out here today. Yeah, it was nice to have you. No, yeah, it was a... Yeah, I love Brother Randy's school. I made baby blankets for the... I guess I'm behind. I better get busy. I make little... They send them overseas for the baby dolls. Oh, how I, neat. I crochet little baby blankets for Well, them. how nice. So, well, I've been doing that for years. I make Afghans. Most of them I give away. So it's like. Well, it's a I talent. I think God gave me the talent, so. A ta the and the well. skills yeah. and the talent to do it. And you touch people's hearts. Yeah, we were told, you know, we were told to pass it on. God gave me the talent to pass it on. Yeah, well, praise the Lord. So I, I've been doing that for years. I've been giving them away for years. Well, bless your heart. It's like, hey. That's wonderful that you do that. That's a. That's well, a me, it's God. He told yeah, me to do it. Yeah, well. And you don't say no to God. Yeah. No, you don't. That's right. That's when I got a chance to come out here today, I said, Lord, I need to go. Might touch somebody's soul somewhere. When God says do it, you, no, do it. you better do it. That's right. <laughs> like I told you, you don't be telling the big guy, no, uh, right. no. That's the reason I named my television show. My name of it is, Are You Ready? Somebody says, well, what do you mean, Are You Ready? I said, Are You Ready for Jesus? He knocks on everybody's door. Yeah. But you got to reach down, turn the knob, and invite him into your heart. You can't let him in. Yeah, you don't have him in your heart. Yeah. Well, I have some people that don't. Yeah, to get him I've in your heart. I've been trying for years, but I won't keep. I'll keep on trying. But it's, it's, yeah, you just sort of work on well, them slowly. Guns. Oh, they have to have signs. I said, you know, some things can't be explained. Okay, they're called miracles. Yep. Some things cannot be explained. Right. What right. did I tell you? Divine interacting. Yeah. No, 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 no. There's not a higher power. I said, well, if there's not a higher power, how did you, how did you get here then? That's right. <laughs> That's right. What's all the, how does stuff all around you get here? All you got to do is look around. You no, can tell. It's all science. They have to have the science behind it. Oh, jeez. <laughs> well, it was a pleasure oh, talking to you. Oh, same here. God bless you. <laughs> Say, yeah. You take care. Oh, I will. Nice to be here with you. Say, yeah, nice to have you. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Oh, Daddy! You did see a girlfriend today? You didn't. Did you see a girlfriend?